Yoruba, Lukumi, and Kendamble are traditions that commune with God. Practitioners believe there is one God who serves as the whole existence on many levels. Humans, the Orishas, their deities, and ancestors all exist on different levels. Through traditional forms of worship, communication, through divination, it allows practitioners to better their lives. The Yoruba people are our people. They're a nation of people uh, that reside in uh, southwest Nigeria. They are also in parts of Togo and also in parts of Benin and probably Cameroon as well. Um, the Yoruba culture consists of uh, a spiritual practice. It consists of food. It consists of dance. It consists of art. It consists of language. And it consists of so many other things. The significance of the Yoruba religion for me, outside of the academic, outside of the theological, just on a personal heart level, I get to recognize and call out the names of deities that are black like me, blacker than me. You know, I find a lot of satisfaction in that. I was watching a documentary by Dr. John Henry Clark called A Great Mighty Walk. And in the documentary, Dr. Clark said, if you are a child of God and God is a part of you, then God is supposed to look like you. And anytime you accept the image of God that looks like another people, then you become the spiritual prisoner of that people. So at that moment, I knew that I'm not going to be a part of any religion, that I don't care if it's a lot of Jesus Christ. If he's not dark like me, then you know he will not get my requests. He will not get my prayers. I grew up in a Baptist household in Detroit, and you know, Jesus was white. All the apostles was white. You never saw a God, but you assumed that he or she was white just because, you know, Jesus was white. I mean, I kind of felt like I was like, okay, I have, I have nothing really to add to this conversation. I mean, you know, I don't want to kneel to a white Jesus. I mean, it's nothing wrong with white Jesus, you know, if you believe in white Jesus, but, you know, I just don't really feel comfortable. I mean, if they say that, you know, God is in the image of, is, is you're the image of your maker, you know, you're the image of God, then why would I be my image and God would be like this Caucasian, you know? It just doesn't add up. What it means to me is, it's quite simple. Uh, it's given me uh, deities that look like me, and it has also allowed me to have a close or closer relationship to my immediate ancestors. So I would say that it has allowed me to uh, hold on to different aspects of myself from the past, but also peel away some of the stuff that, some of the BS, and become a better uh, person in service to humanity. You know, I always talk about what I want to see in other people. Well, I have to be responsible for manifesting that. You know, it's not for the other person to be what I want for them to be. It's for me to be what I want to be so the other person can either follow suit or fall back or whatever. You know, so the, the, the tradition and the religion is definitely mandated for me to be responsible in a way for my own actions. This tradition has allowed me to be Kofensa, it's allowed me to be myself. It's allowed me to discover myself. It's allowed me to be assertive. Um, as a child of Shango, it has allowed me to be, to, it, it has allowed me to know that I am going to be in positions of leadership all my life. Well, that just means, first and foremost, that you have to be a leader of yourself. Because if you can't lead yourself somewhere, you can't lead other people anywhere. It has allowed my relationships with other people to blossom. Put it that way, if I had a bad relationship with somebody, it's probably worse. If I had a good relationship with somebody, it's probably better. That is the main thing that the Yoruba, Lukumi, Kandomble tradition allows uh, people to do, is to know myself.
think the biggest misconception is that um, Lukumi practitioners um, are practicing some form of like dark or evil magic or that um, we're practicing witchcraft or trying to hurt people. It's not about that at all. Really what it's about is helping individuals um, become aligned with the part of the creator that's in them to help get them on the path that is right for them in this life so that they can be happy and live a full, productive, happy life, contribute to the community, um, and enjoy their life. So really it's about aligning someone with their, uh, one word you could use for it would be higher self, and then helping them get in touch with the part of God that is most close to them, and that would be their Arisha. And the goal for that would be to help them to live to their fulfillment of their highest destiny. The biggest misconception about Lukumi, in my opinion, is um, that we, one of the big things I've heard, because we pay honor to our ancestors, because we believe that our ancestors, we stand on their shoulders and they're like lifting us up, and without them we wouldn't be here. A lot of people will say, oh, they worship dead. They worship the dead, which is, you know, it's a misconception. They don't know that we're actually, like, paying homage to our dead. You know, we worship God and God's messengers and that his angels, the Orisha. You know, the dead we pay homage to, you know. So that's a big, big misconception. And the fact, and, the, and then that goes into, like, necromancy and, like, dark magic. They believe that we're practicing some kind of, like, evil witchcraft, you know. But... It's just a misconception, you know. I think also, too, there's a lot of misconceptions about Lukumi and Yoruba and, like, Yoruba beliefs because there's so much secrecy, you know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can't be shared unless you are initiated, you know. So we can't give out secrets so things get made up, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm not a devil worshiper. I swear I'm not. <laughs>